Welcome to Computer Essentials, a hands-on introduction to your computer. Press the right arrow key on your keyboard to continue. On the left part of your screen is a list of topics you will learn about. If you want to review the material in the previous screen, press the left arrow key on your keyboard to go back. When you're ready to exit Computer Essentials and return to the Discover Windows 98 content screen, press the up arrow on your keyboard. You already know how to write documents, balance a checkbook, and read and send correspondence. Whether you're at home or in the office, you can accomplish these and many other tasks using your computer. Your computer includes a variety of hardware components. One of the most important of these is the system unit. It houses the central processing unit, or CPU, which is the brain of your computer. Another hardware component of your computer looks like a TV. It's called a monitor. Text and images generated by your computer are displayed on its screen. You communicate with your computer using one of two devices. You can type information and instructions into your computer using a keyboard, which looks like a set of typewriter keys. Or you can use a pointing device, such as a mouse, to select and move items that are displayed on the monitor screen. You may have other hardware components, most of which plug into the back of your computer. Printers, modems, and speakers are all examples of hardware. A printer produces a paper copy of the information displayed on your screen or contained in a document. A modem connects your computer to the Internet over a telephone line. Audio can be heard through either internal or external speakers. Now let's review what you've learned so far. Do you remember the different hardware components of your computer system? Press the corresponding key on your keyboard to review the function of each component. In this section, you've become acquainted with your computer. Using your keyboard, the next lesson in this tutorial will teach you how to give your computer instructions. You can type information and instructions into your computer using a keyboard. This is the main typing area of your keyboard. It resembles the keys on a standard typewriter. You press and release the keys, and the corresponding letters and numbers appear on the screen of your monitor. Another part of your keyboard is called the numeric keypad. Not all keyboards have a numeric keypad. You use it to enter numbers with one hand, as if you were using an adding machine. These keys are called function keys. They're used to quickly perform specific tasks in your software applications. Your keyboard has other special keys that perform specific functions. For example, the escape key can sometimes be used to interrupt a task. You can use the alt key and the control key by themselves or in combination with other keys to perform keyboard shortcuts. Here's your chance to demonstrate what you've learned. Answer the following questions by pressing the appropriate number on your keyboard. Where is the main typing area of your keyboard? That's right. You've correctly selected the main typing area. It resembles the letter and number keys on a standard typewriter. Which keys work like an adding machine? That's right. You selected the numeric keypad, a set of keys that work like an adding machine. Which keys let you perform shortcuts or other special functions? Correct. You would use the function keys to perform shortcuts and special functions. The more you work with your computer, the more comfortable you'll become using the different keys on your keyboard. In the next lesson, using your mouse, you'll learn another way to give your computer instructions. In addition to the keyboard, you can use a pointing device to give your computer instructions. The most popular type of pointing device is the mouse. This section will show you how to perform four basic actions. Pointing, the mouse controls, 
This section will show you how to perform four basic actions, pointing, clicking, double clicking, and dragging. The mouse controls a pointer that identifies your location on the screen. Think of the mouse as an extension of your hand. When you move the mouse on your desk, the pointer moves as well. Some objects change when your pointer passes over them. To demonstrate, the solid red circle will become a patterned blue circle after you pass your mouse pointer over it. Now it's your turn. Rest your hand on top of your mouse and move it until the tip of the pointer passes over the solid red circle on your screen. Congratulations! You correctly pointed to the solid red circle by placing the mouse pointer over it. You can select and move items on your screen by working with one of the buttons on your mouse. The first action you'll learn is called clicking. Clicking means pressing and releasing a mouse button one time. The result of this action varies depending on the software you are using and the button you click. To demonstrate, clicking on the solid red circle will change the circle to a solid teal square. Ready to try it? Make sure your pointer is over the solid red circle on your screen. Then with your index finger, quickly press and release the left mouse button once to select the circle. Yes, you've correctly selected the solid red circle by pointing to it and clicking the left mouse button once. Now that you know how to click, you can either click the left arrow button to go back or click the right arrow button to continue or press the right or left arrow keys on your keyboard. A second thing you can do with a mouse is called double clicking. Double clicking means to press and release the left mouse button twice in quick succession. When you double click, the solid red circle will become a patterned blue square. It's time to practice double clicking. Move your mouse pointer over the solid red circle and quickly press and release the left mouse button twice. You've pressed the mouse button once instead of twice. That's called clicking. Try again to double click on the solid red circle. Correct! You successfully double click the solid red circle by quickly pressing and releasing the left mouse button. Another action you can perform using the left mouse button is moving items around your screen by dragging them. To do this, position the pointer over an object, press and hold down the left mouse button, move the mouse to the desired place on your screen, release the button. Now it's your turn. Move your pointer over the solid red circle, press and hold down the left mouse button, and drag the now patterned blue circle to the far right side of the screen. Release the button. You've pointed correctly to the solid red circle and you dragged, but you released the button too soon. Try again. Perfect. You drag an item by positioning your mouse over an item, press and hold down the left mouse button, move the mouse to a different place, then release the mouse button. In this section, you've become acquainted with your mouse and four basic actions, pointing, clicking, double-clicking, and dragging. You use these mouse actions repeatedly when working on your computer. Now that you're familiar with the basic hardware components of your computer system, you're ready for an introduction to your operating system in Exploring the Windows Desktop. Your computer is comprised of two main parts, hardware and software. The instructions that tell your computer what to do are called software. Your main software, called the operating system, controls and manages your computer by translating your instructions into a language your hardware can understand. This is the Windows desktop. It's the workspace of your screen on which icons, desktop components, application windows, and dialog boxes appear. The taskbar is one element of the Windows desktop. The taskbar is a gray rectangular bar located by default 
across the bottom of the Windows desktop. The taskbar includes the start button, a button for each program that is open, and the system clock. One of the most useful items on the taskbar is the start button. From here, you can quickly start a program, find or open a document, change your computer settings, shut down the computer, and much more. Your Windows desktop includes several small pictures. These are called icons. Icons provide an easy way to open the programs or documents you use on a daily basis. Ready to show what you've learned about your Windows desktop? Press the appropriate number in response to the questions. Can you find the taskbar? This is an icon, a graphic representation of a program, command, or web page. Now select the taskbar. Great! You selected the taskbar, the rectangular bar usually on the bottom of the Windows desktop. Where is the Start button? Yes, you selected the Start button. Clicking this button brings up a list of software and documents you can open. Find an icon on your Windows desktop. You selected the taskbar, which includes the Start button, a button for each open program, and the system clock. Now select an icon. You selected the Start button which is one item on the taskbar. Now, select an icon. You selected the Start button, which is one item on the taskbar. Now, select an icon. Correct! This is an icon, a graphic representation of a program, a command, or a web page. As you've learned, the basic Microsoft Windows screen is called the desktop. The next topic focuses on where you usually go to start any activity, the Start menu. When you click the Start button, Microsoft Windows shows you the Start menu. A menu is a list of software applications, documents, and other options available on your computer. The Start menu is divided into three sections. The bottom section contains basic operating tasks or commands, such as shut down. The middle section provides a way to open applications and customize options. The top section is personalized with functions that you can add to the Start menu. To the right of some of the items in the Start menu is a black triangular arrow pointing to the right edge of the menu. You can point to one of these arrows with your mouse to bring up a submenu, also called a cascading menu. Next, you'll see how to open a program from the Start menu. Click the Start button to view the Start menu. Point to Programs and the Cascading Programs menu appears. On the Programs menu, Point to Accessories, and another cascading menu appears. Click WordPad at the bottom of the list, and the application opens. Ready for a review of what you've learned? As you've done before, press the appropriate number in response to the questions. Which part of the Start menu includes the commands for shutting down your computer? Correct! The bottom section of the Start menu is reserved for basic operating commands, such as shutting down your computer. Which section of the Start menu provides a way to open applications and options? That's right. The middle section includes programs, documents, and other options that you can choose. Which section of the Start menu can be personalized with functions of your choice? Correct. You've selected the top section of the Start menu, which you can personalize by adding different software, documents, and functions. From the Start menu, you can quickly open software applications, documents, and functions that you frequently use. In the next lesson, Working with Windows, you'll learn how to work with the programs you open from the Start menu.
When you start a program or application, a defined work area appears on the screen. This defined work area is called a window. A window is a movable, resizable area in which information is displayed and with which you can interact. The title bar appears at the top of each window. It displays the name of the open application or software. A window may be moved from one location to another by pointing to the title bar and dragging the window to another location. A scroll bar is a bar that can appear at the lower edge or the right edge of a window. Scroll bars are used when the amount of information in a window is larger than can fit comfortably in a single window. Since a window is a flexible object, you can easily change its size. On the far right of the title bar are three important buttons, Minimize, Maximize, and Close. You can use these buttons to increase or decrease the size of a window, or to close the window. Now that you've learned how to work with windows, it's time to identify the parts of a window. Answer the following questions by pressing the appropriate number on your keyboard. Point to the title bar in the open window on your screen. Correct. The title bar shows the name of the open document or application. Where are the minimize, maximize, and close buttons? Correct. The minimize, maximize, and close buttons are on the far right side of the title bar. Where are the scroll bars? Correct. Scroll bars are used when a document contains more information than can be displayed in a single window. You can easily move around and between windows using the title bar, scroll bars, and the minimize, maximize, and close buttons. In the next lesson, Getting Help, you'll learn how to utilize a valuable resource in Windows. If you have a question about how something works, most software applications include a built-in help feature that provides information and suggestions. On the Windows desktop, help is available from the Start menu. Most applications have a Help button or a Help icon on the toolbar. This button most applications have a help button or a help icon on the toolbar. This button usually looks like a question mark. In most software, the F1 function key opens the help feature. No matter where you are working in Windows, help is never far away. Congratulations! You've just successfully completed the Computer Essentials tutorial. If you'd like to review any of the material, please click one of the topics in the list on the left side of your window. To learn more about Microsoft Windows, click the Contents button and take the Microsoft Windows 98 Overview Tutorial. Easier to use. More reliable, faster, true web integration, more entertaining, Windows 98.